Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I feel like I'm in school. You're going to say my name. Good morning, Scott. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that's fantastic. What a lovely welcome. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Scott McKenzie. I'm the CEO of uh, PMG Funds, uh, for those that I haven't had the, uh, the pleasure of meeting as yet. Uh, and it is my absolute pleasure on behalf of the team here uh, at PMG to express a very, very warm welcome for you uh, to uh, join us this morning. Thank you for taking a bit of time out of your day. I trust that you will hopefully leave from this experience somewhat uh, deeper and richer uh, in the knowledge, uh, not only from myself and Matt as we speak uh, illustriously, illustriously around uh, PMG and what we're up to at the moment, but of course with Tony Alexander, we're privileged and proud to be partnering with Tony on a number of roadshow uh, events around the country over uh, the last few weeks and uh, next week as well. We have another event like this uh, this afternoon at five o'clock. So we've worked out that yourselves uh, don't like driving in the dark and prefer cups of teas and muffins. And the evening crowd clearly like a uh, drink of beer uh, responsibly and driving home in the dark, so that's fine. <laughs> You've uh, no doubt, ladies and gentlemen, uh, been watching the news over the last uh, sort of 24 hours and have seen uh, a case uh, appear down in uh, Wellington uh, with that illustrious word COVID. Uh, we are very conscious of uh, our wellbeing and health and safety. For those of you who have been enthusiastic and come along and haven't had a chance yet just to check in with Sasha on the way in, please do uh, pop your name down when you leave as well. I just want to make sure that we uh, are doing the right things by uh, you, our clients, and uh, I guess New Zealand as well, and hope that things can move on fairly swiftly. So this morning uh, we want to just touch briefly on uh, who PMG is and what we're about for those that don't know us. Many of you in the room have been with us for a long time, so you'll probably hear similar, similar stuff, uh, but we'll do that very briefly. I'll then hand across uh, to Tony, who will uh, obviously enlighten us. Tony, as you know, is a very um, well-regarded um, economic con uh, commentator, and so looking forward to hearing what uh, Tony has to uh, say there and then pass across to Matt uh, McCarty, who's our Head of Investor Relationships. Many of you know the name. Uh, Matt will uh, update you on uh, the PMG Generation Fund offer, an offer where we're raising capital now uh, to acquire or help acquire uh, two what we consider very high calibre, high quality properties, uh, one an industrial property in Wellington, in Seaview, and uh, many of you will know here in Tauranga, uh, the Bethlehem Town Centre, a fairly large property uh, and uh, very high quality uh, underpinned by some very strong uh, tenants and Matt's going to talk a bit about what that looks like, the properties themselves and uh, what the uh, fund looks like on uh, completion as well. Um, I am a little bit tired I must say, I uh, was uh, celebrating last night with uh, the team in Auckland, we were at the CFO Awards uh, and I'm not sure if any of you have been to the CFO Awards, it's quite a sight to behold, a group of accountants in a room and by golly, they can talk. Uh, by the time we got to midnight, we finally finished up. Uh, and uh, Nigel, our CFO uh, for PMG, was actually up as a finalist uh, for CFO of the Year for uh, Medium Business. Uh, and uh, he actually ended up winning. So, uh, so uh, Nigel's with us today. Nigel, give us a wave over here in the background. So we're very proud to have some very, very capable people within our business uh, and I think I, I genuinely think we punch above our weight in the capable people we have and that's got to be a good thing for you uh, as investors and I'll talk a bit about that as well. I just wanted to start by just talking a bit about PMG and um, rather than me do it now, I've got a really short video that we're going to play to uh, give you a bit of background who we are, what we're about. Hi there, my name's Scott McKenzie and I'm CEO of PMG, one of New Zealand's most trusted property funds managers. A lot has changed since we were founded in 1992. Communities have grown and become bustling cities. People are busier trying to get ahead and secure a future for themselves and their families. Business relationships once built over a handshake are now cemented by a signature. Since 1992, We've been proud to have helped shape the property and funds management sector in New Zealand. Today we are the trusted partner to over a thousand investors, some of those being third generation customers. Our experienced and professional property and funds management team manages over 100 properties nationwide for our investors, 
providing inspiring and productive environments where our tenants can thrive. Our unlisted funds provide our investors with diversification, conservative bank borrowing and regular and reliable income. At PMG, the reason we exist is to help New Zealanders achieve financial freedom through creating value and security for people and property. As one of the most trusted property funds managers in New Zealand, we focus on fostering our relationships with our people, with our partners and our customers. Because relationships are the backbone of PMG. PMG is one of the only property funds managers in the country that manages our properties in-house. It is the expertise, the talent and passion of our people that ensures our investors get the most out of their investments. With multiple offices across New Zealand, we have our feet on the ground, staying close to our buildings, tenants and investors. We have a proven track record of stability, continuity and performance through multiple economic cycles. This is because we invest alongside our clients, sharing both the risks and returns with them. This is what we mean when we say, we're invested. As a respected property funds manager, external qualitative research on our funds is a priority. To learn more on how our funds rate compared to our peers, please visit our website. PMG is licensed under the Financial Markets Conduct Act 2013 to manage, manage investment schemes which invest in or own real property in New Zealand. At the end of the day, performance matters. In saying that, we value growing relationships just as much as we value growing returns. Visit our website to learn more about PMG and hear more investor stories. PMG, many happier returns since 1992. Uh, so just a bit of it, as we talked about, PMG's uh, one of the oldest unlisted property funds managers in the country. We've got a number of in investors in the room with us today who have been with us for quite some years. Uh, see John, Nancy, uh, Glenn uh, and co here with us. So thank you for your on ongoing and enduring support. You've seen us uh, as a lot smaller business uh, some eight or nine years ago. So when I first started nine years ago, uh, there was three of us in the business, including myself, and we've had a fairly steady growth curve since then. Um, and we've got some uh, very, very good people who have come into the business uh, over recent years to help us continue to grow in a sustainable way. And it is important when you're uh, growing that you think very carefully about sustainable growth and ensuring that you're actually well resourced to do so and well planned, and it's not, not just for growth's sake. So we have been very, very much had that at the front of our mind around what our strategy actually is. And for us, it's not about getting bigger and stronger and better. As for us, it's actually doing the right thing by you as investors and our funds by growing robustness and resilience with scale so we can have uh, reliable income within our funds. And I think what's occurred over the last 24 months with the COVID pandemic has demonstrated that as well. So we'll be around about 750 million of uh, commercial property uh, that we're responsible or custodians for, ranging from Invercargill now through to uh, Whangarei. And that's a responsibility we certainly don't take uh, for granted. Uh, and we have a very good team across the country, as we talked about in the video, and an in-house team who are close to our assets to ensure that we're doing the right thing by our clients, our tenants, and yourselves as investors as well. PMG was founded back in 1992, uh, almost 30 years ago. Uh, Dennis McMahon uh, founded the business. Dennis actually sits on our board today. So it's really helpful to have uh, some grey hair on the board. So a young upstart like myself, keen to get on and do things, uh, getting the reins pulled back in uh, from time to time to make sure that we're not getting out there and too carried away. Uh, we've endured now, and very proud to have endured for, through a number of economic cycles uh, since PMG was formed. Uh, 87, Asian financial crisis, 97, 98, 99, you recall, uh, global financial crisis and the COVID pandemic, just to name a few. And as a business, we've actually taken on board the learnings and the skin we've lost over those years to help improve how we go about uh, doing business at a future state. So it's been really, really important. I've talked about the people that have come into our business over the years. We purposely bring as many as we can down to see you at these events to understand who we're actually working for. Uh, from both our offices out of Auckland and Tauranga uh, as well. 
Of recent years, we've been thinking about uh, what the next 30 years looks like for PMG, uh, beyond even my tenure with the business, and I'm here for a while yet to come, hopefully. Uh, and part of that we're thinking is ensuring, OK, what do we really need to ensure that we've got around the table that we can be sustainable and make good decisions? And so we announced recently this year, you would have seen some coverage, uh, an equity partnership with 360 Capital. So 360, one of the highlights for us uh, in the uh, early or last financial year, essentially, uh, they're an ASX-listed funds manager based uh, out of Sydney. They uh, have teamed up with us, uh, and uh, they are a business that has been around for 15-odd years, established in 2006. The chap on your left there is Tony Pitt. Now, Tony's actually from uh, Taupo originally, uh, and so he immigrated at a younger age across to uh, Sydney in Australia uh, to originally actually well, spent some time in Perth, then Sydney, taking on the Australians at their own game in the financial capital uh, of Australia. And he's been very successful in his own right in building a large business over there, uh, having, having listed that uh, a few years ago. Now, we consider Tony very much a Kiwi success story, very much like Pavlova, Farlap, uh, and a number of other things. Crowded House that they, they have teams seem to have borrowed off us as well. James on your right uh, is uh, heads up the fund that's partnered with PMG. Uh, he heads up their real property fund uh, and we spend a lot of time working with James. He's actually got a Kiwi link as well. He's married to a Kiwi out of uh, Mochawaka, uh, at the top of the South Island. So nice to have an association with the guys and they're good people uh, as well. Why have we teamed up? It's one of having good capability and funds management expertise around the table, particularly as we continue to grow in a steady manner. But also provides us deeper access to capital. So it provides us the confidence when we want to go and acquire high quality properties with a view to bringing them into any one of our investment funds that we can do so with confidence. And Bethlehem Town Centre that Matt's going to talk about shortly is an example of that. Increasing the quality of the portfolio and the resilience of income within the portfolio is principally what our driver is around our growth strategy. Very pleased, another highlight for us, recently closed the Pacific Property Fund, and many of you would have participated in that fund. Uh, we closed that uh, in three weeks with about 68 million of uh, investor capital uh, raised to help acquire uh, another uh, six uh, industrial and office properties into that particular portfolio. Uh, and very pleased and humbled to have had a number, quite a number of new clients join the PMG Investor Fund uh, as well, so we certainly appreciate that. One thing we're proud of over the last financial year, having been a pandemic year, is how our funds have performed and shown the resilience as such through the COVID period. Uh, we faced into March and uh, many businesses, including ourselves, were thinking, OK, what's next? Uh, and we had a quote from one, someone who was speaking to us last night at the CFO Awards. Uh, they were looking at their business inwardly and said, hey, how come we've performed so well through the COVID period? And it's actually the strategy and the lead up and how you positioned yourself to events like COVID that help enable you uh, actually perform and uh, be more resilient and bounce out of it in a more stronger and nimble way. And I think the way we've set up the funds through the income resilience, the diversity of tenants and buildings and geographies across the country has enabled us to actually continue to uh, deliver the cash returns that we set out to on each of those funds. And that's quite important to us. So delivering total returns for the year between 9 and 19% uh, for all of our funds, that's the growth in the value of the units, but also the cash returns. Uh, for us, we're very proud of that. Can we sustain those sorts of double digit returns for next year and the year after? Honestly, we don't know. No one can pick the top or bottom of, of an economic cycle. What we are focused on is regular cash flow and building a strategy and resilience of our funds to enable that to happen. One of the areas that we're very passionate about as a business, and I guess uh, what our responsibility is as a funds management, property management uh, industry leader, in our view, is doing the right thing. So our focus around the environment, the community that we operate in, and also taking a leadership view within uh, the industry uh, as well. So focusing heavy, heavily across our portfolio around energy and waste efficiency, diverting over 38 tonnes of waste uh, from uh, the waste landfill to recyclable matters, improving the energy efficiency of the portfolio, and launching our carbon strategy as a fairly hard, heavy carbon emitted uh, industry, uh, we've got a responsibility to play there. And it's also saving us 
cost, and so that's also good for business as well. In the community front, you've seen there one of our purposes, or our purpose is to help enable financial freedom for everyday New Zealanders. And so we look at the young generation today coming through and there is a bit of a gap in terms of some of the financial literacy that we're delivering as parents but also within our schools and the education system. And moving into an environment where we've got high asset prices and potentially some inflation and the wing's not far away, uh, it's important they get a leg up. And so we've identified that and recently very proud to have established a charitable trust. Uh, which is geared around helping improve the financial literacy for what we call the next generation, the youth of tomorrow. Uh, to, uh, and we've partnered with a number of organisations to do that. Uh, and uh, next year, hoping to roll out uh, educational programmes in partnership with them to over 20,000 14, 15 year olds around the country. So I think there's a real value that we can do, and we've got, we're well placed to use our networks, our skill, and our knowledge to help move that dial. And I think it's a good thing for. New Zealand Link as well. If anyone feels passionate about that, then please get in touch with the team. We'd love to have your support with the trust as well. And taking a bit of a leadership view, so we heard uh, this morning Nige has taken uh, an award, best of his game in the finance game at the moment. Um, Simi was recognised late last year as the leader of her, of her area, Facilities Management uh, Association in New Zealand. So we do genuinely have great people who are taking an active leadership role within business. And so we're very proud of what we're achieving I guess still as a small business, uh, but punching, in my view, uh, above our weight. Yes, it is, is the answer to this question. Is New Zealand commercial real estate the most reliable income option for investors? Uh, we believe so. To further reiterate some of the points that Tony was making, um, this line from the back, you can't see it at all, so I'll explain it. The, the title to this graph is Annualised Inflation-Adjusted Net Cash Returns. Uh, on different investment asset classes over time. The ones down the bottom, um, you could probably see are returning under zero, well under zero, between sort of negative one to negative 1.5%. What I, I, I like to use this graph, and, and many of you will have seen it before, because it visualizes, uh, helps us visualize what Tony was saying. So those three bottom lines down the bottom are essentially fixed interest products in New Zealand uh, on terms rating uh, or ranging between six months to 10 years. Uh, and that is uh, corporate sovereign bonds and cash in the bank. All right, so Kiwis are losing uh, north of a billion dollars every year right now through cash, accumulated cash that they're keeping in the banks. The banks love Kiwis with money in the banks right now, right? It's easy, it's free, essentially. Um, but Kiwis are, are far better, uh, are worse off as a result of this. Um, and I think though, uh, sorry, I'll come to the top line so, um, uh, now. So the top blue line is PMG funds consolidated returns and the yellow line is, uh, is the listed property uh, sector. So there is a bit of divergence between listed and unlisted there or a yield premium uh, for being in the unlisted space like with PMG. But I do think Kiwis are starting to wake up to the fact that cash in the bank and you're all testament to that, uh, cash in the bank is, is not working for us as investors anymore. And the way in which we can see that happening is if you look at um, cash held in banks right now, it's increasing. But the proportion of cash in the banks held on deposit versus cash is decreasing. So Kiwi deposit holders are saying, that's it. We have had enough. Uh, we are now, you know, I suppose, seeking opportunities or other alternatives to generate a better return on our money so that we can lead the lifestyle that we, uh, we believe we're entitled to lead, and I think that's fair. Um, so we are seeing an increased movement out of fixed interest products, um, and that's why you're all in the room. And commercial real estate, is it a reliable option? Yes. Now, valuation-wise, it does bounce around. Through the global financial crisis, commercial real estate in New Zealand lost circa 30% of its value and it fully recovered within three years. The share market comparatively took about seven years to fully recover its losses. So Kiwis flock back to reliable income streams and bricks and mortar when things become uncertain. And we saw that behaviour in the GFC and at some stage in the future when we do hit a, I'll refer to as a proper recession, um, you know, we, we will see that again in the future. Um, but the green and the red line demonstrates that valuation change over time. But the green line illustrates income. And you can see that that is incredibly consistent all the way through. And the higher the quality of your real estate, the better the quality of your tenants, 
the more consistent that income should be over time. And this is what's helping drive unprecedented uh, interest in not just PMG funds, uh, let's be fair, but some of our competitors' products as well. And this alternative um, sort of, let's call it a fixed interest proxy type product uh, continues to see um, quite, quite honestly just um, unreal sort of demand to invest in this space. So I'm going to talk a bit about the PMG generation offer. That sets the scene around what we've been seeing um, and what we expect to continue to see. Generation Fund, uh, much like PMG's other funds, is designed to be diversified by geography, by property type and by tenant industry. Um, and thus mean that as investors we don't have all of our eggs in one basket. So um, if the volcanoes in Auckland start deciding to blow up, uh, that might have an impact on some of the real estate, but not all of it. If Christchurch decides to get shaky again, same rules apply. Um, and the case that I sort of refer to around when that became important was when Auckland last year went back into level three lockdown and the rest of the country remained at level two. Now, a lot of our listed peers have been consolidating in the, in the uh, Auckland commercial real estate market over the last sort of five to ten years. And what happened was they had to have that discussion around, around what rent relief might look like for those tenants in Auckland. And because we had a portion of our portfolio there, now relief may or may not have been provided, um, but there was the conversation. And so by having a nationally geographic, um, uh, geography um, diversified portfolio, uh, we can help mitigate some of that risk. Uh, it's designed to provide sustainable cash returns. Again, the diversification in the portfolio helps drive that. We don't have any reliance on one tenant to generate our returns, so if something happened to a tenant, it shouldn't have a material impact on our performance. Real estate over time does tend to deliver growth and value, um, as I'm sure many of us are homeowners or property owners, we know this. Land bricks and mortar does go up. Um, and we address the idea of improved investor liquidity by breaking down barriers to access this type of investment product. So if you wind the clock back 30 years, uh, minimum investments in this space used to be $250,000, $500,000. So your amount of clients that could gain access to that in New Zealand might have been this big. With the generation fund, we break that right down to a minimum investment of 1,000 units at $1.09, so $1,090. So your, um, your availability of investors who can access this is you know, exponentially larger. Now, that does, it doesn't disadvantage anyone in the room, um, but what it does do by having that lower minimum is open up you know, the under 30s, the under 40s, the other tw under 20s. That can gain access now to a very critical asset class, which we know creates long-term wealth, and they can get in there now. And what that means is we've got more investors who are comfortable, familiar with the product and our company. And at some point in the future where some investors might decide to liquidate or sell your investments, we've got a larger, a much larger, more active buyer's pool there that can facilitate that trade. So as it stands at the moment, the por property uh, portfolio consists of three assets, um, 26 Sharp Road in Hamilton. This is leased to, to, to Torpedo 7. This is their national... Uh, warehouse and distribution centre and they feed product comes in off the ships and then they feed that out to their retail stores and this services their online business as well. Uh, 67 Vickeries Road, this is in Christchurch, Wigram. Wigram is a very tightly held um, industrial precinct in Christchurch, inland sort of back towards the airport I suppose, or halfway between the city and the airport. Um, leased to a company called Eurocorp and they have a number of um, brands under their, their umbrella business. Um, out of here they run a company called Complete um, complete reinforcing, some at steel and complete reinforcing. Um, and they do fencing steel products and construction and infrastructure um, steel product manufacturing. And Jamaica Drive, Granada North, for those of you that know Wellington, Granada North is a wee way out of the CBD, it's probably about 15, 20 minutes north, um, more or less over the road from Tawa as you head towards Porirua. Uh, Granada North is a very small industrial pocket, um, myself and my team were there um, early last week, well before this stuff happened, uh, with regards to the Aussie traveller, so don't worry about us, we're fit and healthy. Um, but the anchor tenant here is Coca-Cola, um, Amatil, this is the Lower North Island Distribution Centre, and the two other tenants on the site are uh, Micrographics and um, Rento, Rento Kill. And the total metrics as it stands at the moment, just a touch under 60 million, it is completely full. Loan to value ratio at a conservative level of 37%, three assets, five tenants, and a weighted average lease term of three and a half years. More importantly, we want to discuss what the fund will look like uh, post the acquisition of the two target properties. So we've got 19 uh, Bethlehem Road, um, otherwise, as we know it all as locals, Bethlehem Town Centre, 
and uh, Gough Street, Seaview, Lower Hot, Hutt, Wellington, an industrial site in uh, Seaview. Just to give you some context, the Wellington industrial market continues to remain um, buoyant. Uh, sorry, Wellington's economy continues to remain buoyant. Uh, Wellington has significant land constraints. For those of us, I'm sure we've all been there, it's surrounded by hills, a lot of reclaimed land in the CBD. Uh, there is not a lot of room to carve out more land. Um, and access to um, you know, major arterial routes, state highways and the port, other infrastructure key, key node areas, is critical for industrial-based tenants. So the area of Seaview is a very tightly held industrial precinct. Overall, Wellington industrial vacancy uh, is around 1.5%, and it's the lowest since records uh, began. Seaview, uh, about 0.2%. So you could almost argue that it's virtually non-existent. So from a landlord's perspective, we already own via the Pacific Property Fund, which many of you will be familiar with, um, industrial property in Seaview. So we're very familiar and comfortable with owning, uh, owning real estate in that area. Um, industrial rents have increased about 3% over the last six to 12 months, and that's simply due to um, increasing demand from industrial type tenants for space and not enough supply coming to the market. So when that happens, we get um, you know, rental rates um, or, or pressure on rent rates in upwards direction, which is great from a landlord's perspective. Um, the greater area will benefit from big infrastructure developments like your transmission gully. Um, and all your major real estate agencies are predicting further growth with respects to um, rental growth and yield compression. And so this sort of summarises why as a um, commercial property uh, investor, uh, we're very interested in this space continue to be. So the Gough Street asset, prominent location um, in Seaview. Uh, we're probably five minutes or less from your state highways going south or north and probably at about 15, 10, 15 minutes from the port. Um, as I said, market vacancy in this area is incredibly low. There's a 10-year lease from December 20, 2019, so that takes us out to 2029, uh, with a company called HJ Asmus. They're over 100 years old, still family-owned, um, and they're a leading supplier of um, steel products throughout New Zealand uh, and worked on a number of large infrastructure projects uh, nationally. Seismic rating is 67% here of uh, national building standards. Now, um, for an asset like a, a multi-leveled office property, uh, we might be concerned a bit more about that. For a single level industrial property, we're less concerned. Uh, they don't have significant, if any, at all, racking internally. So not storing products vertically, where if they had a good shake, things are gonna come crashing down on workers. Things are stored more or less at, uh, at ground level and they don't have a significant number of staff operating within there. So um, for a single level industrial site um, of that nature, with the way they interact with that real estate, we're quite comfortable with that. Towering a retail market, um, very strong population growth. We're targeting 18% over the next, or on track for 18% over the next decade. Uh, we've experienced as a, as a region uh, or a city 9% annual economic growth over the last five years. Retail trade volume is expected to grow to somewhere in the vicinity of $1.5 billion uh, between now and 2023, so let's say 10 odd years. And Tauranga, when compared to the um, national uh, averages, is quite under retail. So Tauranga, at national average, is about 5, uh, 0.50 square metres per person nationally. Um, now Tauranga is at 0 0.39 square metres. So what that metric essentially shows you is there is not enough retail um, commercial real estate um, compared to national averages here in Tauranga. And that that's sort of um, you know, signifies opportunity as far as an investment thesis goes. Uh, so over 100,000 people live in Tauranga now, predicted to grow to 115,000 uh, in the next sort of decade. And there is limited new supply um, uh, set to hit the market, particularly in that large format space, which is what we're attracted to here in Bethlehem. Um, what else do you want to talk about? That's probably it on that slide. Let's get into specifics about Bethlehem Town Centre. So the purchase price or acquisition price is uh, just a touch under $95 million. This is a true institutional grade asset um, and PMG's largest single acquisition we've made in almost 30 years. It's 7.8 hectares, so this is a large land holding and um, what most of us locals would describe as a key location. Um, high profile, good access, incredibly well car parked with over 1,000 car parks on the site. Um, it was been, it's been developed quite thoughtfully and carefully over time um, with something called a sight line and things in mind. So when you come out of Countdown or Kmart, you should be able to see the brand on the other side of the centre and it helps people come out and go, 
oh, I need something for dinner. And so they walk out of Kmart and they immediately see Countdown and they walk through all the other shops on the way through. And now you're all sitting in a seat going, I've done that before. Um, and that's the intention. That's why it's been designed that way. That helps to facilitate spend and, and economic um, activity on the site. So very thoughtful design. There are 54 tenants on the site and over 55% uh, of the total rent roll is driven from what we call the large format or bulk retail tenants. Those being Countdown, Kmart, Chemist Warehouse, which is a major draw card for that site. Um, I'm sure pharmacy owners and things, uh, there might be a couple in the room, uh, don't despise that brand, but from a, a consumer perspective, it's, it's great. Um, BP, obviously recently developed, um, and Smith City. Uh, so there's 97% occupancy on the site, so there is a little bit of vacancy here, and that's attractive for us as an, act, uh, an active value-add uh, commercial real estate manager because we can obviously lease that space up and generate more revenue from the site. Seismically, 100% of MBS and a weighted average lease term of 4.1 years. Interestingly, and, and we'll just be open about it, uh, the countdown lease has a couple of years left to run. They were in discussions with the current owners or vendors of the site to extend uh, for a double digit term already prior to us going in. So we know that there's no other real land available for them to, to develop anywhere else. If they wanted to do that, um, they're running out of time, essentially to have something completed by the time their lease is up. Um, and we know that their site is under rented to the tune of almost $300,000 per year. So one of the first jobs we'll have as an owner of the site is to go to work on that deal. Um, and we're very confident having done this time and time again, we do an assessment of you know, what's what's in and around the, the site, what the flight risk looks like, and make a call on that. And we did the same with Coca-Cola and Jamaica Drive, where we added about a quarter of a million dollars worth of rent and extended the lease, and that had massive upside on the valuation of that particular um, site. And we expect to do the same here. So on the completion on and successful acquisition will be five assets, uh, over 60 different tenants. Uh, we'll maintain the portfolio investment entity structure 166 million dollar portfolio value. So this comes uh, then becomes sort of number two uh, behind Pacific Property as our second largest diversified commercial property fund. We're lifting the weighted average lease term through this acquisition, and we maintain that conservative loan to value ratio. To give you an idea, some of our peers would be running at 45, uh, 50 percent as a result of um, uh, under their loan to value ratio. Now that mightn't have been an issue about 12 or 24 months ago when rates were going down. Uh, but the more debt you hold over the next wee period as we start to see inflation interest rates potentially coming up, um, that will be more of an issue. So we like to maintain that more conservative approach around debt. Um, all we're trying to really demonstrate here with the wagon wheels, as I call them, is that prior to the acquisition, Torpedo 7, uh, Torpedo 7 was responsible for 44% of total rent roll for this portfolio. Now there is a long lease term still in place with Torpedo 7, uh, and so it's mitigated to a point. However, we don't want to be reliant on that much rent coming from one tenant. So um, upon completion of this acquisition, Torpedo 7 drops uh, significantly to 14%, and we add other large format retailers like Countdown, Kmart, et cetera, into the mix. So we have a much more diversified, more sustainable model post-acquisition than what we do pre. And all we're demonstrating here is that through your acquisitions, all you really want to see is your lease exp expiry profile pushes out to the right side of the graph through every acquisition that you make. And that's essentially a reflection of your weighted average lease term. So through acquisition, your leases are falling further out down the, the chart. And that's um, why your weighted average lease term is pushing out. So the offer is now open. Um, we have 63 million units uh, targeting, uh, sorry, at a minimum 69 million total, so about 75 million of capital. $1.9 per unit price, 1,000 unit minimums, and then multiples of 1,000 thereafter. The offer is partially underwritten. It's open. It closes on the 29th of July. The cash distribution is lifting slightly from 5.8 cents per unit to 6 per, uh, cents per unit. So original investors that paid a dollar for their units about 12 months ago in the peak of COVID-19 when everyone was going into lockdown and investor confidence was falling off a cliff. Well done to you guys that took a position because now your units are paying you 6% on original price and you've had a 9% increase in unit value. Um, so well done and thank you for having the confidence in us to continue to deliver throughout that very uncertain period. Um, but now you are paying $1.09 for your units and it will show a 5.5% gross cash distribution. That's net of fees and expenses, gross only of tax under the pie tax regime. 
And just one final note, um, to live our, our sort of dream of ensuring that commercial real estate remains accessible for as many different types of investors as possible, we've also had this available um, via the Sharesies platform and we've had um, yeah, about 1,600 different investors uh, participate through that. Uh, we only have to deal with one investor, which is Sharesies, which is, um, thank God for that, because my team couldn't handle 1,600 investors with about $100 each. Um, and we're also making this available this week through the Invest Now platform, which um, maybe less of you will be familiar that, with, but they break barriers down to the managed fund sector. So um, normally managed funds are 20, 25 grand. They break it down right to sort of $100, $500 odd. So, so it's really trying to make sure that even, you know, even more generations of Kiwis can gain access to what is a, a critical asset class for long-term wealth creation.